Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Good Exchange webinar covering next steps to using Twitter. My name is Marina Stebbin. I'll just quickly go through the agenda, uh, let you know how to ask a question and introduce you to the presenters. So what we're going to cover here is tweeting. So advanced Twitter. So if you haven't, aren't familiar with Twitter, we do have an introduction to Twitter webinar, which you can look at on our website. Uh, it's still worth going through this webinar, but we would advise that you have access to a Twitter account because we're going to cover things like creating and using images, videos and GIFs, using hashtags and what's trending, why mentions and using mentions, pinning tweets, shortening URLs and then engaging with content that's already been created by using Twitter search, by liking by retweeting and retweeting with comments. So in terms of presenters, you've got two presenters today. You've got me, Marina Stedman. I do the marketing for The Good Exchange. So you'll see some of the emails inviting you to webinars and events and things coming from me. And we've also got Misha Wallace, who's our client services administrator. Say hello, Misha. Hi. And she's probably the person that a lot of you know because she's the leader of our customer service team. So you'll speak to her on the telephone and get emails from her if you have any questions or issues about using the Good Exchange platform. So in terms of this webinar, it's ideal if you have login access to an active Twitter account already so that you can try out some of these techniques. Ideally for your organization or if not for your own account. And as I said, if you don't have a Twitter account already, you can watch our introduction to social media webinar, which goes through all the steps for setting up a Twitter account for your organization. And also it's great if you know how to save documents because we talk about creating some images and saving them onto a file share. So why social media and particularly Twitter are a focus for this webinar? If you look at in the UK, so this is back in January, the most active social media platforms you can see here that according to Hootsuite and various research organizations, Twitter is sixth most used social media platform in the UK. So 46% of people in the UK say that they use Twitter. So in terms of the number of people who use social media in the UK, it's about 45 million, which is about 67% of the total population. So you can see that if we're trying to get over a fundraising message about what our charities are doing, then Twitter is a good medium with which to target those people because you can target about 67% of the population. And one thing to bear in mind when you're making tweets is over half of them are accessing social media through mobile devices. In terms of behaviours, the people who've got the internet who actually visit a social media platform is almost 100%. And three quarters will engage on social media. So the, the, I mean, the reason I put these up is it's, it's when you're targeting your fundraising, social media is a great way to access people through the internet because you know that a high proportion of your target audience is going to be using social media at some time during a month. And particularly why Twitter? So Twitter has about 330 million users across the world. And interesting, although 1.3 billion accounts have been created, 44% of those have made an account and left it before ever sending a tweet. So one thing to bear in mind if you're looking at setting up a social media campaign using Twitter or Facebook for your charity, then make sure that you have the time to actually keep your account up to date and use it. Because you can see here that over half the organizations of people who've made Twitter accounts haven't used it. So they haven't started engaging their audience, creating a following and getting their message across. But on the good side, there's about 6,000 tweets sent every second and research shows that when people on Twitter tweet something and the organization they tweet about or ask a question to replies or responds, then over three quarters are feeling a lot more positive about that brand or that organization when that happens. And 
If you're a UK based charity, the UK is the third largest number of users of Twitter in the world after the USA and Japan. So there's a very big audience in the UK for us to target with Twitter. Now, I don't know if you've used Twitter lately, but you may have noticed that Twitter's rolled out a new Twitter.com, so i.e. the online version of Twitter, not the one on the mobile phone. So it started rolling out from the 15th of July, and it looks and feels much more different than it did before, but the desktop version is, is more consistent with the mobile app. So you can see what it looks like here. That Twitter's trying to more personalize things with what's happening. So here it's giving you suggestions of things you might like and trends that are happening in the marketplace. I'm going to talk a bit more about trends. So it's trying to base its trends on things it thinks you might like, but also you've got this new left-hand menu where you can quickly and easily access things like your homepage, your notifications and messages, and your profile. So it's really easy to switch between your homepage, for example, and your profile that shows you everything about your organization. So they've tried to make it a lot easier to navigate. Now, some tips for Twitter before we get into how you do these things. Twitter is all about the content. So there's some statistics here that I picked up. People are 31% more likely to recall what they've seen in a tweet compared to something that they may have seen generally via the internet. But some things to bear in mind, if you put your URL in the middle of your tweet, you are 26% more likely to get it retweeted than you put it at the beginning or the end. So you might notice on tweets, for example, you've got a more. So Twitter will only show most people in a stream the first few words or characters of the tweet. So it's important to try and get your key message and your URL high up. But people don't seem to like it if you put your URLs right at the beginning because they want to read a little bit about what your message is. If you include a hashtag that we're going to cover in a bit later, you can get as much as a 1,065% increase in engagement compared to a tweet without hashtags. And if you've got video, you can get about 10 times more engagement or a GIF, 55%. The other thing that's important about Twitter is Twitter serves, and what I say is 2 billion search queries per day. So on Twitter, people, about 2 billion searches will be undertaken. So make sure on your Twitter biography that we cover in the introduction webinar that your Twitter biography describes what your organization does in a way that you think that your, your fundraisers and your target audience will search for you because that makes it much more likely that your organization and your organization tweets are going to come high up in the search. Uh, Misha's gonna cover search a bit later in the webinar. So images. I know it's quite a challenge for charitable organizations to have a bank of good images. So I want to take you through a tool called Canva which is free for charitable organizations. And it, what it means is you can design images without being a graphic designer. So at the Good Exchange, we don't have a graphic designer and we use Canva to design all of our images. So as I said, it's free for charities and nonprofit organizations. And I've got the link here. So you just click on this link, register your nonprofit or charitable organization, and you can start using it. So the good thing about Canva is it has templates for everything. So it has templates for Twitter, Facebook, adverts, brochures, and they're all sized exactly to the size you need. So you don't need to worry when you create a Twitter header, for example, whether it's going to fit in the space that Twitter gives you. You can also set your branding for consistent style. So you can see here that this is the social media posts history for the good exchange you can see we've got our green branding we've got our logo we've got everything set up so that anyone that uses canva through the good exchange has all this set up for them automatically and also you can have it's got a, a whole library of free images so you don't have to have your own photography but you can find images that relate to your charitable organization this is what your canva page looks like when you log on to it with so this is what, what it looks like. So you can see here, we've got our designs in folders. So we've got website banners, 
We've got our email banners, our social media posts, our campaigns, our webinars, and we've, we've got them all in folders and you can see all the designs there. So once you've signed up for Canva, the first thing you want to do is to create your brand kit. So what we mean by brand really is your colors, your logo, and maybe you have a specific font. So on the left-hand menu in Canva, just click on brand kit and you can choose your color. So you can see here, if you're familiar with the Good Exchange, we've got green, some varieties of green, orange, gray, and white. So to set the colors in there, you'll need to know something called the hex code. It's just a computer code, it's a hashtag with some numbers, but don't worry if you don't know what it is, because there are some ways that I'll show you how you can find that out. You need to have access to your organization's logos, and you can choose your font if you've got a specific font that your charity uses. Then these will become the default for all future designs that you do on Canva. So if you don't know the hex code, there's three ways to find it. And I've got some tips here. If you know the Pantone code, which a lot of people do, you can go to this app, Converter, type in your Pantone code here, and it will automatically tell you what the hex code is. So the green for the good exchange is Pantone 355C, and you can see here the hex code is 009639. So you can see I've got the hex code that I need to put in to the colors, to set the colors in Canva. If I don't know the Pantone number, the codes for it, I can go to a lookup like this one. So this is a school's one. You can go in here, you can scroll down, find the color, or find a color that's similar to the one you've got, and here it'll tell you the hex code. So you know if your color is purple, you don't know exactly the hex code, you can just find a purple here that looks like your purple, and there's just copy that hex code and put it in. Alternatively, ask the designer or the agency that made your logo or your brand. So once you've got your brand set up in Canva, then you're ready to start creating a design. So it's really easy to create a design. Just go to the menu on the left-hand side, click on the Create a Design button. And if you're making a Twitter header here, just start typing Twitter and you can, you'll can you see the Twitter header and Twitter post come up. So click on Twitter header and what you'll get in your Canvas screen is an empty template for a Twitter header that's already created to the right size to be imported into Twitter. Now, depending on what sort of charitable organization you are, you can just pick one of these ones that, that Canva suggests. So they've got a massive list and you just click on all and you'll see everything that's available or you can look in different categories like photography here or travel or quotes and scroll down and you can see more and more of those. Now, if, if you find one you like, so here, Organic Festival, you just click on it and it will automatically appear in the template. So it's really easy then to create one you like. And then you can put your own photos in there and your own wording if you like. Or alternatively, if you don't like any of those, you can make your own. So to do that, you click on the Elements tab here on the menu. Click on grids, which you can see here, and all. And what you'll get is a list here of different shapes that fit into exactly into your Twitter template. So you just click and hold them and drag them over and they will automatically be fitted to size. So these are just guidelines for content. So, so in this Twitter header, which looks very similar to the Good Exchange, when you've got a, like a square box and three rectangular boxes, which are templates for where you put your content. And you just use these white dots or shapes to drag the shape to fit in to the, box, the template size for the Twitter header. So once you've done that, you can use Canva images. And as I said, Canva's got hundreds of photos and images that you can use. You just click again on the photos icon. And if you just want to see the ones that are free, click on free on the top right. And here you've got a massive list of photos that are completely free for you to use. You can even type in a type of photo. So here I've typed in charity and you can see I've got categories of different types of photos that I can use 
free of charge in any design that I'm making through Canva. If you find a photo you like, all you have to do is then drag it across and you can see here that it automatically fits into the shape that I've made in my Twitter header. If you're not happy, just drag it off or delete it and you can just add a different one. So it's really easy to fiddle around, play with things until you get a design that you like. The other alternative is to add your own images. So if you've got some images of charitable events or your charity or something, save them to a folder you can access online. So maybe make a Twitter images folder. Go back into Canva and you can see here you've got an uploads option. Click that and click on upload an image. And you can see here, these are some that we've uploaded. Go to the folder where you put your picture. So you can see here, I've got it in box. There's my picture. Click open, so click on open. And the picture that you've just uploaded will appear here in your list of images. And then you just drag it on to your template. So you can see here, I've uploaded an image that I had and I've put it here in my Twitter header. You can do the same for your logo. So logo that you uploaded earlier is in folders under logo. So you can see here, I've put the Good Exchange logo now in my Twitter header. Now, if you, if you want photos that aren't in Canva, I've just listed here some good sources of free photos, GIFs, cartoons that you can get, that you can download from the internet. So Unsplash and Pixabay are free. Deposit photos, you can get not free, but very cheap photos. So they're offering, for example, 100 photos for $69. If you want cartoon type photos, there are these two. And if you want GIFs, which are moving images, there's giphy.com, or you can get them directly from Twitter. And I'm gonna cover that in a little bit. So now you've got your images in there and your logo, you might wanna put some wording in your Twitter header. So if you want a solid block of color, you click on elements and then you click on shapes. Click on all to see the fullest. So here you can see we've got blocks of shapes. You choose a shape you want. So you might want a circle or a square. I'm going to choose a square. And then you get your square in your template. So you can see here I've got my, well it's a rectangle now, in my template. And I want to make that green. So to make it green, I click on the colored square. And then what happens is my brand colors appear here and I can just click on green. I think it was that green. Yeah, and you can see here that I've now made a rectangle that's colored with the Good Exchange green. So now I want to add my message to that colored box. So I go back to the menu and click on text, type, add a heading and you can see here in the bottom I've got a box there where I can add a heading so I could just move I've moved it to there and then I can start typing so you can see here I clicked on the text and I typed the not-for-profit charity owned matching platform so what I've got now is a perfectly sized perfectly branded Twitter header that I can upload to my good exchange Twitter page so how do I do that well, first of all, I need to give it a title. So go up to the top on the right. You can see I've titled, titled it the Good Exchange Twitter header. Now, I want to download it. So I click on the download button and download. And I select here, I want to save it as a PNG file, which is what Twitter will recognize when you upload it. And I just click on the download button. So you can see here that that Twitter header that I've just made in Canva is perfectly sized to fit into the space on Twitter for a Twitter header. So you can, you'll see at the bottom, you've got preparing your design and then the PNG file will either open on your screen or you'll see it as a file at the bottom of your screen and you can open it. So then you just have to save it and upload it into Twitter. Now there is an option here you can see that says publish directly to Twitter. So to do that, you'd have to give Canva permission to access your Twitter account. So you can do that if you want, but I've always found the easiest way is to save the header and then upload it into Twitter because you've got more control of what it looks like and sort of testing it, for example. So you can see here, I've got my header. 
once I've got it open, I right click and save it. Save as here. And I put it in a folder, e.g. my Twitter images folder. Then I can log into Twitter, edit my profile and add the new header image. And if you can't remember how to do that, you can download the slides from our introduction to Twitter and Facebook webinar and it goes through exactly how to upload a header to Twitter. So that's how to create a Twitter header. Now if you want to make an image for a tweet, you do it, go through exactly the same process, but instead of a Twitter header, you select a Twitter post. So you can select that from here in the menu or here in the center bit where you've got all kinds of different templates. And that again, that Twitter post, if you select that, will be exactly sized for a Twitter post to post straight into Twitter. Now, so that, those are static images that I've talked about designing headers and posts, but a lot of people you'll see these days are using animated images or GIFs, so images that move. So what's a GIF? Graphic interchange format, might come up in a pub quiz. They usually have an extension of .gif and they're used to create mini animations that loop, so they go round. So if you click on a tweet that's got an image, it'll do something for a few seconds like wave at you or dance, and then it'll go back to the beginning and keep going round and round and round. You can get ready-made GIFs online directly from Twitter or Facebook or from GIF sites such as giphy.com. You can also use movies if you want, which are in MP4 format. So why use GIFs? As I said earlier, tweets with GIFs get an over 55% more engagement. They're eye-catching, they're attention-grabbing. I mean, people like them and they like to share them and they have a sense of fun. So, so you can actually make a GIF in Canva, which is great. It's a new feature that they've just made available. So you create your picture in the same way that I just showed you, but make sure your picture has some separate areas. So here you can see we've got a photo, we've got some text, we've got a logo and a picture and another logo. But you need something to be able to move in a GIF. Then when, you, when you're ready with it and you click on download, and instead of clicking straight on download, you scroll down and you've got this animation option. It's a bit further down the screen. Then here you can see you've got different styles of GIF. So you can just click on one and what will happen is you'll get a preview here. So play around until you pick one you like. Download it and make sure your file format here says animated GIF. You'll see the GIF appear at the bottom of your screen and then you can open it and save it or show it in the folder. Or if you can't find it, Go to your PC and look in downloads and you'll probably find it in there and then rename it to, you know, this one is Harry's hat, for example, and move it to a folder where you'll remember because you want to upload it to Twitter. So here's one that we've made earlier on Canva. So how to add when you've made a GIF, your GIF to a tweet. So you go to your Twitter page, start a new tweet on the tweet button and you click on photo not the gif icon the gif icon is for twitter's own gifs which i'll show you in a minute so you click on the, the photo icon go to the file location where you saved your gif file click on open your gif then appears in the tweet and you can start to write some copy like donate to the harry's hat charity put the link in put a hashtag in and then tweet it so when that tweet is played, your image will move and will repeat. The other option is to use a GIF from Twitter. So one that Twitter generated, so start a new tweet, click on the GIF icon, and you'll see a list of available GIFs. Now, from my experience, the list of GIFs that Twitter has are a bit, they're a bit cheesy and a bit American but you might find one you like. I type donating, for example, and these gifts, when you look at them in Twitter, they'll actually be moving so you can see what they look like. So I pick donate now, you just click on add, and that gif will appear at the bottom of your tweet. So that was about images and gifs, and adding images and gifs to your tweets. Now I'm going to hand over to Misha, who's going to talk to you about hashtags and trending. 
So now that Marina has taken you through um, adding images to tweets, we're looking at some other things that you can add to your tweets to make them a bit more interesting and to attract a wider audience um, to come through to your page, engage with you, join your page, and of course, um, donate to your projects as well. So what are hashtags and trends? So two separate things here. So first of all, a hashtag, um, it's written with a little hash symbol before a particular word, and it's used to index that particular keyword or topic on Twitter. So for example, if you are interested particularly in fundraising, you can search for the hashtag fundraising on Twitter, um, and it will present you with all of the content that's on Twitter currently that contains that hashtag or it's about fundraising. So it's a really good way of finding interesting things and um, also um, bringing people into your own tweets if you use a particularly popular hashtag. So um, basically, ones, hashtag words that become very popular on Twitter, so say for example, um, hashtag charity, um, they can become what's called trending topics uh, because Twitter uses hashtags as part of its trends. So what they do is they set up an algorithm to look at what's currently popular across Twitter and then they can present people with those current popular hashtags. And again, it's about bringing in a wider audience. So to use a hashtag, as I, as I was saying, you put the hash symbol before the particular word in order to categorize those tweets and help them show up in the search for anyone having a look. Um, if you click on the hashtagged word in any message or any tweets, you will see all of the ones that show that hashtag. You can add a hashtag anywhere in your tweets and you can add more than one to draw people in but um, it's recommended that you don't use too many as it really can distract from the key message that you're trying to put across. So two, three, maybe maximum would be enough. So Twitter can um, choose what you see. Um, so what you want to do is um, kind of find the relevant trends and hashtags and people for your organization to follow. So the way you do that is you go to your Twitter account and you click on home and trends for you. Check your location by clicking on the little cog symbol there that you can see at the top. And as I said, these trends are determined by Twitter by an algorithm. So they're tailored for you based on who you follow, your interests, where you're based. But you can uncheck, uncheck the box there if you want Twitter to show you um, trends that things are relevant to you. You can uncheck that if you'd rather they didn't do that for you. But what they do is they have a look at this algorithm. They're having a look at what you're searching, what you're writing about, and they do try to get that tailored to what you'd like to see. So see what's happening with a particular trend. So from your list of trends, you can click or tap on the trends and you will see the Twitter search results for that particular trend. Again, it's another way of searching interesting topics. So to see the previous trend, you can also perform a search for that keyword, example given on the right hand side there, hashtag GBBO. So hashtags and how to use them. Well, in addition to using the trends, you can click on the hashtag within the tweet, or you can use the search bar on Twitter to find a particular hashtag. And Twitter actually calls this search bar the explore bar. So in doing this, you can view who's saying what, you can engage with any of the content that pops up that's now relevant to you. And you can use popular hashtags in your own tweets. So for example, if you saw that hashtag fundraising was trending, you can try to include that in your tweets over the week to try to bring in everyone who's clicking on that hashtag. It helps you to follow new relevant pages because you can again interact with the tweets that pop up. And again, it's about interacting, engaging with other people, really sharing that engagement, um, which in turn can encourage them to come through and engage with your content as well. And of course, follow your page. Now that was hashtags, and again, that's about searching and trends on Twitter. Um, definitely do include hashtags when you can in your tweets. What people often do is they get a little bit mixed up between hashtags and mentions. Mentions are a little bit different, and I'm going to go through that with you now. 
So what is a mention? So the hashtag previously um, was adding a little hash symbol before a keyword. But a mention is when you add the at username of another page on Twitter anywhere within the body of the tweet that you're creating. So the example we've given here is donate to our project, here's the project link, on at the good exchange. Now as soon as you type in at the good exchange and select that page, that page will be notified about your tweet and they can come through and have a read and see, with, see what you're doing. They can like your tweet, follow your page. It's a way of drawing the attention of other pages on Twitter. So you can see here, I've just given a list of reasons why we do it. Um, it's drawing those people through to your tweets. It can also allow you to give a nice thank you message to some of your supporters as well, which is quite nice. And as I said, the, the accounts you've mentioned will be notified, see your content and interact with you and follow you. So how do you see your mentions? Who's mentioning you on Twitter? How do you know? Well, if you are mentioned, you will see a number appear in the notifications section on the left-hand side Twitter menu on your account. If you click on notifications, you'll see all of the people mentioning you, all of the tweets you've been mentioned in. And it will also show you ones that have been liked and retweeted, which we'll cover a little bit later. You can click on the mentions tab to see just the mentions alone if you want to rule out any that have been liked and retweeted. So this is a full list of anyone on Twitter mentioning your page. Now it's a good idea to check your notifications on a daily basis. If people are mentioning your page, it's nice to acknowledge that if you can, um, and it really does um, help with your own engagement as well. So go in, say thank you, like what they've done, follow their page. It's all about kind of getting that audience and getting that relationship with other pages on Twitter. So how do you find um, a user or an organization, another page to mention? Well, to do this, you can type in, if you know the one that you're looking for, you can type in at and the name of an organization into the search bar on Twitter, or just directly into the tweet box when you start to set one up. Twitter will show you a list of the pages it thinks you're looking for, and then you can select the relevant one there. Now, this is why um, it's quite important when you're setting up your Twitter account initially that you do have a logical account name so that you make it easy for people to find you on Twitter when they want to mention you. So if you click on the correct one that you're looking for that Twitter presents you with, it will appear as a mention in the tweet and when you post the tweet, the page will be notified. Now, just like hashtags, Twitter recommends using only one or two mentions in a tweet. You don't want to put lots and lots and lots of them and use up all of your character limits. Um, just a couple is fine. And of course, the people that you're mentioning makes them feel a little bit special as well because you're focusing just on them. So that was hashtags and mentions in your tweeting. Now we're going to have a look at how to pin a tweet, a particular tweet, to the top of your own Twitter page. So a pin tweet is automatically fixed to the top of your organization page on Twitter. It should contain a key message because obviously anyone coming through to your page is going to see that straight away as the first one. So you want to have a key message that you're trying to put across within that tweet. So do pick something relevant when you're choosing which tweet to pin to the top. So it's nice to have this. So anyone visiting your page, it's extremely visible right at the top. It can attract a relevant audience for you. I communicate your key message, as I said, and it can generate more engagement. If you've got a nice call to action in that tweet, for example, come through and fundraise to our project on the Good Exchange, it's giving people something to do. Um, if it's interesting, they will like it or retweet it for you. So it can really generate engagement. So it's about showcasing a particular tweet at the top of your page. So how do we pin a tweet to the top of our page? It's quite simple, go to the Twitter profile on the right hand menu and scroll down to the tweet you want to pin. So do find a nice relevant tweet to put to the top and you can change this anytime. 
Click on the drop down arrow on the top corner of the right hand side as we've shown there in the picture. And select the option pin to your profile. And click on pin. The tweet will automatically be pinned to the top of your profile page and anyone visiting will see that one first before they see anything else. Um, good not to leave the same one pinned for too long, try to mix it up a little bit, change it maybe every week or so, um, just to kind of keep that interest and that engagement going. Now, what we're also wanting to go through with you today, just very briefly, is how to shorten a link um, your URL, so for example, your project page link on the Good Exchange. Now, Twitter will only allow you to have up to 280 characters in one tweet. And it's a bit different from Facebook, where you can put quite a lot of text. Twitter is only 280 characters, so you don't want to have this great big long link in there taking up most of your characters. So if you can shorten that link, it can allow you to then use the characters for a proper message in your tweet instead. Now, nicely, Twitter has um, put in a little bit of functionality that automatically will shorten your links for you. So if you set up your tweet, add your link, Twitter will shorten that down so that it's not taking up all of your characters. And you might think, oh, why is my link now showing as a t.co link? That's not what I put in. That's just Twitter shortening it down for you to, to make it a little bit easier. Now, this is an automatic thing that happens. It's not something you can change unless you set up what's called a vanity URL that reflects your organization name. Um, we've set up our own shortener so that ours all shortened down to goodx.uk so that people know it's good exchange. So you can do that online. Um, but the easy option is to just let Twitter do it for you. Or you can use online free tools like Bitly as well. So um, it's, it's easy enough really just to let Twitter do it for you if it's there anyway. Okay, so skipping on again um, to using the search on Twitter, um, something you do want to be using to find relevant pages um, and relevant content to what you're doing. So if you um, use the Twitter search, and as I say, they call this search bar the explore bar, um, it's quite often referred to, and it's at the very top right hand side of your Twitter page, and it can allow you to find relevant pages, it can help you to find content, for example, if you're searching a hashtag in particular, and then you can start to really interact with posts and pages, and in turn, they might do that back as well. So how to use the Twitter search? Very simple, click within the search Twitter box, just click into the box, and then type in the search term. So what, are you, what do you want to find? We want to find here all content that talks about fundraising. You can even put in the hashtag if you want to here as well, but you don't always have to. So Twitter's then saying, okay, I think you're looking for fundraising. So we're going to select the option that's presented as with, or you can simply just press enter on your keyboard. Twitter will then present you with all the results, which is essentially all content on Twitter that contains the term that you're looking for. So you can see here that we've been presented with um, a couple of uh, tweets by other organizations and other pages uh, who are mentioning fundraising. And some of this might be relevant to us now. So we can start liking, retweeting, uh, joining the page and following the page and hoping that these pages will do that in turn as well because we're, we're doing something similar really. So that was briefly search so you can use that just to have a look around Twitter and see what's happening and just there I was saying once it finds the results for you you can start to interact with the content that you're shown and you can do this by liking tweets retweeting them or retweeting them with comments. So I'm going to go through that with you now. So let's start with likes on Twitter. So what is a like? And this can get a little bit confusing if you're thinking about Facebook at the same time, but they, they work in a very similar way. So if you like a tweet, um, this is represented by a little small heart and it's used to show appreciation for a tweet. So if you see something that, oh, this is quite interesting, I'm going to just like that and you just click the little heart. 
Now you can view all the tweets that another page has liked by visiting their page and selecting the likes tab. So you can have a look around, see what other people are liking, what they're finding interesting. So you just click on the likes tab on any page. And to like a tweet, you simply just find the tweet you're interested in. So you're having a little look around Twitter and you think, oh, really like this, this is, this is fantastic. I want to interact with this tweet. So you click the little like heart icon and you can see here that it's turned red and this confirms that you have actually liked the tweet. But if you've changed your mind or you've clicked it by mistake, just click it again to undo this action. Now, when you like a tweet, the page who have posted it will see that you've done that and they may also in turn engage with you or come through to your page to have a look and follow you as well. So it's about connecting with people. Now, an interesting note is if you have your own personal Twitter page that's separate from your organizational Twitter, you can also go into your own account, visit your organization's page, follow that and like the tweets there as well. Um, so is, that's essentially you as an individual connecting with what your organization's doing, just a little bit extra. So that's likes and that's the, the little red heart and that's just a simple straightforward, I'm enjoying this, this content. But what you can also do is retweet, which is send out another post, another post or tweet from an organization's page to your own page. You can also repeat your own tweets by clicking on retweet. Now, retweets are represented by two small arrows and it helps you just to pass along news that you find particularly interesting with your followers on your page as well. Now, when you're retweeting a, a tweet, it's, it can be done in two ways. So the first way is clicking on the little arrows to retweet straight away, or you can retweet with a comment, which allows you to retweet the message but also add a little comment at the top first before you share it out with your followers. Now, whichever of the two options you use, Twitter will always reference the tweet that you're sharing, so people will see the content of that tweet. Now, just as an added note, if you want to include the author of the original tweet, you will need to mention their username in your retweet with comments. Um, they're not automatically notified um, unless you do this on the retweet with comment. So let's have a look with how to do this. How do we retweet? So same way as the likes, you first find the tweet that you're interested in or select one of your own tweets that you'd like to share out again. It's a really good way of repeating your own tweets without having to type them all out again. So we find our um, interesting tweet here. And then what we do is click on the little arrows that I mentioned before, and you can choose to either retweet immediately or retweet with a comment instead. So the retweet's immediate, that's done, and it's um, copied over onto your organization page out to your followers straight away. But the retweet with comment is a little bit more interesting. So what it will do is it will present you with a little box above the tweet where you can type a comment. So you can say, find this interesting tweet from Mary Hare School and please assist them with fundraising. Please visit our page as well to donate, something like that. So it's a, an, an opportunity to add a message to that as well. Now, it's worth noting too, um, you may think, oh goodness, um, that original tweet all of that content might be included in my character limit. It's not. Twitter sees that as completely separate. It's only anything you type in the comments box that will use up the 280 characters. Now, once you have retweeted any post with um, either of those options, the arrows on the post will turn green. Just like the liking, you can undo that by clicking the arrows again. Now, as soon as you retweet, the page who owns the original will be able to see that you've done this. And again, it's about tempting them in to come in and view and follow your page and engage with your content as well. So you're interacting with other pages. Now, here's a couple of examples. You, this is what these retweets will look like on your page once you do it. So the one on the left here is an example of an automatic retweet. 
you can see it's showing the tweet on my page. It's telling me above that I've retweeted, just here. You can see it's quite small. And you can see that other people are starting to engage with this post on my page as well. So it's been retweeted again, and it's been liked by four people as well. So you're spreading the word and encouraging that engagement. This is an example of a retweet with comment. And in this example, what we've actually done is retweeted one of our own tweets rather than someone else's. So it saved us typing it all out again. And we've wanted to shout out about this particular news. So we've used retweet with comment, shows our original tweet, and we've given a little bit extra information and also mentioned some other accounts as well. So two good options there by Twitter. Now I've gone over a little bit about just a minute ago as well about reusing a tweet. Now with 500 million tweets posted every day, as, as Marina was mentioning earlier on, um, millions of these are not noticed the first time they're published. They, they can disappear a little bit. Now, the half-life of a tweet is 24 minutes, so the tweet will get half its interactions in the first half hour. So you don't want to just rely on posting one tweet all of the time for one particular message. You want to put this out several times so that you're hitting more people and ensuring that you get a wider audience for that particular message. So it's worth reusing your best ones, um, having a look, thinking, okay, I'm going to send that out maybe on a weekly basis. Now, you have a couple of options. You can retweet like we did earlier with the comment. You can just straightforward retweet it again, or you can copy it and paste it instead. So um, if you choose not to retweet it, what you can then do is go to your profile page from the right-hand menu, Find the tweet that you want to copy and copy the entire text of the tweet, including the links, the mentions, the hashtags, your whole message. Then you just click on the blue tweet button on the right hand side and paste in the copied text into a new tweet. Do check that the, the spacing, the links, the hashtags are all okay, nothing's cut off, everything's there that you want to say. You might want to add a little bit to it as well. And then be sure to also add your original image or your GIF onto the post. Um, it's always nice to have some kind of image or something on your post to, to draw people's eye. And then it's simply a case of clicking tweet to tweet it out again. So repeating tweets, retweet them, retweet them with a comment, or copy paste them. Three options there, but do try to post the same tweet more than once spread over time. Right, so we've come to the end now. If you'd like to keep up to date with what's happening at the Good Exchange, including our latest training webinars, then do sign up to our social media channels. You can see the links listed below. And thank you very much for watching.